Okay, in this module, we're going to actually cover the, uh, the actual biblical doctrine of inspiration and inerrancy of the scriptures. And here, I can, as I mentioned in the last module, we have uh, several videos from a uh, good friend, Dr. Price, who teaches at Talbot. And again, so we can t take advantage of the wealth of information we have here at Talbot School of Theology. And we put our uh, nice elenctic, uh, pe you know, uh, elenctic spin on it. Uh, that said, uh, this session, you're going to be looking at the Geisler and Nix text. This cover issues of inspiration and inerrancy. We're looking at Dr. Price's lectures. Uh, I'm going to add, uh, of course, other things that I've covered, like defective views of inspiration and some other ideas associated with it. But just to introduce the topic, and again, why it's important, I covered this at the end of the last session, when, or we looked at the interpretation of Scripture. But in the end, remember, what we have to have is an authoritative Bible. So remember, Romans 13, 1, that's where we start. All authority comes from God, okay? And so from that, that means any human, any book, for it to have authority, somehow you have to trace it back to God to have legitimate authority. And this would, uh, the Bible, a book, a human would have some type of imputed, uh, the transitive property of authority or something. So this is why inspiration is so important because as we'll see, as I mentioned in the contemporary challenges, I gave a, an overview of the defective views. I'll briefly restate them here uh, in, in the next section. But uh, ultimately we look at inspiration, here's what we need. There are a lot of defective views, but we need to get to verbal plenary inspiration. Uh, verbal, the words, plenary, each and every or all, okay? Each and every word of the scriptures in the autographs, okay, is inspired. And that means God is the source of it. God produced the words of the book. And we see this Again, in a number of texts, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, all scripture is God-breathed. Now, there it's important to note when you're doing your exegesis, we're looking at the foundational verses here, is that it doesn't say all apostles are inspired. It doesn't say that, you know, all prophets are inspired. It says the books the writings are inspired by God. So this is why when we get to the doctrine of inspiration, it's going to start with God working through the knowledge of the human authors to produce the words that God wants to use in his book. That's so that they carry clarity and truth and divine authority. So all that to say is that, again, we're going to cover, uh, Dr. Price is going to cover a lot of this in his basic lectures. I believe it's six parts that he'll do this. So, but we're trying to get to verbal plenary inspiration. And this is important too, that inspiration and inerrancy go hand in hand. See, because since this is God's book, and frankly, we could spend the whole semester on inspiration and inerrancy. But we look at inerrancy, the defective views of inerrancy go along with the defective views of inspiration. Okay, You can say that, yeah, the Bible has errors, but errors in what? But if you're saying God produced the book, you'd have to say God made the errors. So this is why when it says God who is unchangeable, God who has all knowledge, God who cannot lie, God is the one who produced the book, hence... Inerrancy is more than just, I went through the Bible and I, and I haven't found any errors yet, okay? Uh, on that note, remember the important thing is, is that it must be inerrant because of the character and nature of God, okay? If it's not, then that isn't the book that represents the true and the living God who only tells the truth, is all-powerful and all-wise and so forth, and claims to have produced the book. So, that's why it's significant. We'll look at these defective views in the next session. But so that's that's the, the very concept of inspiration and errancy that we need to get to, to have a Bible that ultimately we can bow our hearts and bow our knees to and actually let it command our conscience and bind our beliefs. But as we'll see, you know, as over the, the centuries, the defective views creep into the church, what it does, it, it ends up diminishing or eliminating the ultimate authority of the Bible. So this is why what we need to do is, again, take. Uh, we need to be serious about verbal plenary inspiration because all, all I'll ask you to do, and I've done this in my Essential Christian Doctrine lectures, is look at the last 2,000 years of the church and look at how it always starts out 
that, you know, we start out well with the gospel, we're out saving, you know, uh, preaching it, people are getting saved, we have revivals, reformations, great times of evangelism, and what happens? Ultimately, the Bible is diminished in its authority. And we go to some other source for our doctrine, and we end up diminishing the gospel because the authority of the Bible is diminished. So it is our task, and it is so vitally important that we we really do remain strict on inspiration and inerrancy. So with that, uh, in the next segment, uh, again, uh, uh, Dr. Price is going to cover six videos on the very concepts of inspiration and inerrancy. You'll cover this in your Geisler and Nix text. But in the next segment, I'm going to look at a number of the defective views of inspiration and inerrancy that I touched on in, the, uh, uh, in my contemporary challenges section, but we'll review them again here properly in this, and they'll be open for discussion on the boards. Thanks.